Greetings, my name is Rudimentary Rob. Welcome back to my Valheim series. This is episode 11. Now I've got something pretty special in store for you this episode. Uh, this is a culmination of, I don't know, about two to three hours worth of play sessions over two or three sittings. Uh, don't worry, I've managed to crunch all of that down to a little over 45 minutes. We are in for quite a bit of action today. And uh, where I may have previously trolled a few of you, I promise you that's not happening this episode. Hint, hint. Anyway, strap in. There's going to be a lot of jump cuts. Uh, mostly skipping out on the farming and smelting, because uh, that's all pretty pedestrian once you've done it once or twice. Uh, while I was doing my plant, I got raided, except they couldn't get in, so they all just got stuck in the trench, and as soon as I finished farming, I went back out and cleaned them up. And here we are in typical fashion. Every time you want to do some legitimate business and collect some wood and a lot of the good stuff, the uh, local environment types always show up and tell you why it's such a bad idea. And then, you know, once again, I have to convince them that it's necessary for the cause and that they should, well, you know, go away. Alright, now we skip out on that boring tree chopping to come down here and uh, get back into the Black Forest uh, gathering. And uh, some may have previously noticed that uh, the only troll down here was me. But, -dum -dum uh, but there is actually a real troll down here this time. So, hey, that makes two of us, I guess. After dealing with the other locals, I'm just uh, getting a bit of a idea of the lay of the land and deciding if I do actually want to kill this troll. Well, uh, no guesses, I, I do actually want to kill this troll because uh, as far as I'm concerned, he's just a gigantic deer that takes a little bit more work because what I really want is his hide. And the only way I'm going to get that is if I kick his butt. And so here is me kicking his butt. Now, if you've not fought a troll before, the sound of those thumping footsteps in your ear, and it sounds like they're like two inches behind you, if it doesn't make you want to or need to change your underwear at least three times during the fight, then Valheim might not be a particularly scary game to you. But for the rest of us, uh, your instinctive reaction to, you know, soil your underwear in a non-positive way upon close encounters with the troll, I think is just the correct and completely acceptable response.
Now apologies if I accidentally uh, chopped out the dropping of the portal back at base but this is the companion portal to that to facilitate fast transit between here and my farm as I called it. Now the portal you can't take metal through it which is why you can see the little symbol with a cross through it in the corner of the copper icon in the chest there but you can take basically everything else through it so this is a great way if you're collecting wood or stone or basically anything that you can teleport this is a great way of getting it from point A to point B with like literally no effort at all Wow, see if you can spot what's different here. Any guesses? Still not sure? Hmm, might have to put some visual clues there. Needless to say, my uh, smelting of all that metal does require a lot of wood in addition to a lot of copper, which is what I'm now back to get more of. And as you can see, that's two copper nodes down already. Alright, time to go and pick out my next victim, ah, oh, sorry, copper node. Uh, and I remember there was a big lumpy one sticking out of the ground just up the hill here. I'm just uh, scouting the area for locals before I get too carried away with the mining. Look at all that juicy copper. I've got 35 sitting in the chest there ready to go. I'm just taking a moment to unload some stone back at the base uh, before we get back to the task at hand. Now, eagle-eyed viewers will notice, oh, why is there so little stone in the stone chest when not two minutes ago in this very video we saw almost a full chest full of stone? Well, funny thing, when you're setting down, uh, you know, a wall around your new base, it takes a lot of stone. Don't worry guys, you'll get caught up on that a bit later.
It is good practice to routinely clear out the chests in your little outposts like this. Uh, not the least of which, if something goes wrong, it's less stuff you've got to clean up later. Uh, but I was also doing it in anticipation of, uh, you know, moving that a bit further down the coast at some stage. And that always goes quicker and easier if there's less to move. Uh, now I'm just illustrating my go go gadget get the copper back to base option uh, take the Ike there buff and then sprint but of course because I've got the portal there the Ike there buff is going to last more than one trip because we can teleport back Now here we are teleported back down to the Black Forest to get the last of the copper from the chest. Because uh, it's night time it doesn't hurt to have a have a goosey and just make sure there's no locals close to your base. Uh, that might might make it a little bit awkward trying to uh, you know depart without things being destroyed. Uh, it's quite tragic. Uh, I mean this close to home it's not so bad but if you've just sailed out somewhere and you know you've dropped a portal and you've uh, your only boat is at the island and you know something follows you to your portal and you don't notice and then you go to use the portal in a day or so's time and you find oh it's not connected anymore hmm yes not good to have to make a boat from scratch to sail out there to find that you know your boat and or your portal are just a pile of debris on the ground that can get really inconvenient sometimes my friend itchy knows all about that I got sick of these deer, you know, teasing me with their presence all the time. Uh, it sounded like there was, you know, four or five of them. It turns out I think there was only three in the end, but I do still need a, a fair bit of deer leather, so, you know, why not? If they're going to be there and die easily, I'm who am I to say no? I was planning on building the cauldron, which is the first uh, significant bench for cooking. Uh, unfortunately, as always, I did not have enough tin. So here I am back up in the north here. Uh, many will remember that this is the area where I encountered my first dungeon and I still may have a small amount of PTSD from that, but anyway. It does look very pretty up here and I do seem to like to get good weather and the middle of the day when I'm here so I will uh, I will enjoy the beauty shots whenever I can see them a few locals there as always to interfere with my overall enjoyment of the Vista
Now, in this north area, I had explored quite a lot of it, but there was a section on the map that was still unexplored. And I do remember seeing my first troll on this map. Uh, as you remember, that bit broken tower, he was sort of just over in here. Only got the most fleeting of glimpses at him, but considering I seem to be on a roll with trolls, huh, um, I thought I'd see if I could find this guy, and sure enough, he was still here. Anyone realise that was a troll? I did. Now, I may have accidentally cut this bit out, but I did, as you can see, make two pieces of troll leather armour at some point. Uh, it's five bits of troll hide per piece, and uh, I don't know, maybe this troll seeing me wearing his cousin is uh, a little bit more offended than normal. Uh, because he's made sure that a few of the locals have joined in on the fight as well. You know, just because I've already got half the locals in on this fight. You know, there's a pig nearby, let's just get it in on the, you know, in on the action as well. Now, those towers, when they're intact, they can actually stand up to a fair bit of abuse from a troll. So if you get caught somewhere and there is a complete tower that you can kind of climb to the top of, it's not a particularly terrible idea to actually do that. Uh, I do remember many times in the past resorting to that tactic and it does usually work out for you. Um, the added bonus is when you're up higher than the troll it becomes a lot easier to just shoot his head and the head is a weak point uh, particularly with piercing damage like arrows and things of that nature. So one eternity later we now have ourselves a dead troll and some more troll leather that we can continue our troll armor set with. Uh, to make all of the tier 1 armor it's only sort of 5 pieces per, uh, except I think the cloak needs 10 from memory, but uh, when you start upgrading from the first tier of the armor that's where you really start needing to kill a lot of trolls. Uh, but I primarily, at this stage, I just want the full set so I get the sneak bonus. You get plus 15 sneak if you've got a full set of troll leather. Uh, I don't know if I'll upgrade beyond level 1. Uh, but having one full set of troll armor for the sneak bonus is very handy. Now we have skipped ahead a day or so of, of uh, game time and we are now looking at dropping a separate fireplace and uh, our cauldron.
Now, the cauldron itself, it has to go over a fireplace because, you know, it doesn't come with its own fire. So this is another one of these modular, you know, build a thing next to another thing kind of Valheim type things. Honestly, I actually quite enjoy this system. Uh, I'm also, because uh, quite a lot of the meat that ends up going into the cauldron recipes ends up needing to be cooked, I thought, eh, I'm here. I'll throw another two cooking racks next to it, just in case I need them later. Now you can see all of the recipes that I've already unlocked, uh, including a number of good uh, food recipes, but also uh, the bases for the meads. Now I've got the cauldron down, I'm focused back on some farming, and I included this just to show you where I'm up to in terms of the sheer number of carrots that I can grow. Uh, it's kind of an exponential process. You have a seed, you plant a seed, it grows a carrot. You take the carrot, you plant a seed carrot, and when that matures, you get three seeds out of it. So it does, uh, it does build quite quickly, but obviously the more seeds you have at the start, the faster you'll get up to a point where you can start, you know, pulling quite a number of carrots out of your crop and still have heaps of crop to rotate back into the ground for seed for the next generation. As you can see, I'm only replanting 100. Uh, as seed carrots, but of course that will give me 300 seed. Uh, this guarantees I'm going to have spare seed in the future, which I'll store somewhere else just in case of disaster. Uh, and then I'll end up planting 200 carrots, and then my cycle will be to take 100 carrots out for cooking and, you know, feeding the pigs, and then the other 100 carrots goes back into the ground to make more you know, seed carrots, and then we just repeat the process. Now, the other thing uh, I am eventually going to start doing is setting some seed aside for chickens in the future, because chickens eat seeds uh, in addition to some of the other crops. Uh, if you start growing your stockpile of seeds early, you'll end up with so many seeds, you probably won't even need to panic about trying to find any food for your chickens later. And now, thanks to my earlier gathering and having the carrots and the mushrooms and all the other bits and pieces, I'm now going to cook up a storm to give myself some superior food for the days to come. So we're making carrot soup. Now, this is takes a lot of carrots. Takes three carrots per, plus one red mushroom. Uh, but it's quite a nice uh, early food as well as the next item I'm going to make which is uh, deer stew and then we'll finish up by making some minced meat sauce. Here I am just eyeballing a few upgrades. At the moment, as you can see, I still only have the level 1 bronze axe and level 1 bronze mace. But oh dear, look at all of this copper from earlier. And we've even got some leftover tin and bronze. I wonder what we could do with all of this metal. Yep, that's right. 20 copper and 10 tin gives us 10 bronze. Which is enough to upgrade the axe once and the mace once. Yep, this is why we need so much copper.
Yep, and if you're wondering why we are still using our antler pickaxes, that's why. It's going to take 10 bronze just to make one bronze pickaxe. Don't worry, we will do it eventually, but it's a bit of a priorities thing. Uh, given I've got two antler pickaxes, I can do quite a lot of mining with those without, you know, between repairs. Uh, but before we uh, finish with the Bronze Age, oh, you better believe we're going to be making a bronze pickaxe. Don't worry about that. Now, you might be saying, look, Rob, this has been an amazing episode. You've packed so much in so far. Look, you, you must be about ready to wrap the episode up. Oh, no, no, there's a bit more to go. And it's, oh, wait, back at base. Hang on a minute, what's this other portal? We haven't seen that one before. I wonder where it goes. Why can we see it hear the sound of water? Oh, could this be the site of where our new base is going to be? Ah, oh, and here is a boat I prepared earlier. And we're going to take our boat for a sail. Uh, don't mind the graphic artifact there. That's uh, literally the only time I've ever seen the game do that to me. But anyway, we didn't fall through the world, so no harm, no foul. So this is, was, or at least this was always on my to-do list relating to any future mining. Uh, the boat has four slots and is not subject to a weight limit, uh, so it is perfect for early mining. The downside is it takes a few bronze nails, quite a lot of fine wood and some deer leather. Uh, but once you've got those in abundance, it's uh, pretty good to have one of these fellas to go and do some mining. Uh, I'm just having a nice relaxing cruise down the coast here. I did nearly need a change of underwear there because I didn't realise that this gap was wide enough to actually fit an ocean biome in the middle. So I start uh, keeping my eye out in the off chance that I might see a sea serpent because they spawn in the ocean biome. Uh, you don't tend to see them as much in fine weather, so given I'm not really in the best way for dealing with the serpent at the moment, I'm crossing my fingers and toes that we don't come across one. Uh, spoiler alert, uh, we did actually, we got lucky. Now you can see here the weather seems to change on the, you know, flip of a coin, but the weather seems to be generated on a biome basis, so the, the weather in the ocean biome was fine and sunny and amazing, uh, but the forest biome, as it frequently is, is literally blowing a gale, so you get used to this after a while, but uh, general rule of thumb, don't try and approach a coastline at a million miles an hour in your boat on the off chance that you have an unfortunate encounter with the shore due to large waves or inclement weather. Now this is the bit where I'm going to troll you into thinking that I'm just here to do some more mining. Ha ha. But I am actually here to do some more mining because this mining node is perfect for what I'm going to call troll mining. Stay tuned, it gets interesting.
Yep, that's right. Big things like trolls can damage mineral nodes. So the trick is, you've got to stay in melee range just long enough to bait them into taking a swing and then you sidestep so you don't take damage. Now what adds a layer of uh, complexity to this particular encounter is it's raining which means I've got to be mindful of my stamina because I have a wet debuff which slows my stamina regen. So I'm, you know, I'm trying to do this but I'm also trying not to die in the process. Now there's a, a key step here which you can see I've completed which is to get the troll to make a hole so that when he does either of his melee attacks he's always going to be hitting the copper and therefore he's always going to be mining. And as you can see uh, if you don't time it well you will take a lot of damage but if you do time it well look at all of that juicy copper that I haven't even had to pull my mining pick out for yet. quite sure where that skeleton came from but as you can see he uh, he got his last great act of defiance he think he hit the troll for like five or ten damage and the troll one shot him in return so you know bye bye mr. skeleton and we get back to our troll mining Now in case you're wondering, yes you can smell a troll's breath from this close and no, they don't use breath mints or breath freshener. Now it is always a good idea when you are troll mining to ensure your troll is, where possible, maintained at a low health level. In case things go wrong, you want to be able to kill them, uh, you know, very, very, very quickly, lest they try and do the same thing to you. And trust me, they can definitely do the same thing to you if you're not careful.
this is pretty much the point where I decided that I wasn't going to be able to get the troll to mine much more of this node without a higher personal risk of injury and this is where having the troll at very low health means a single arrow to the head finishes him off and I'm just left to mine maybe half of the node myself which is a lot more time efficient than having to mine the entire node myself by hand. So thank you Mr. Troll, your service is much appreciated. Now we have the boat here conveniently so that we can unload the copper directly into the boat. As you can see it will take four stacks of 30 copper. Uh, I just uh, fast forwarded that bit. Uh, essentially we did a lot of mining by hand and unloading into the boat. I haven't moved the boat yet. Uh, it's going to take a couple of mining sessions over a couple of game days to fill it completely. Uh, so at this point we're just, uh, it's night time, we're going back to base just to chill and unload all of the other good stuff that we'd found. I was a little bit hopeful when I got back. I thought, oh yeah, I might be able to make the uh, troll high cake now, but that's when I realized I need 10 troll leather, not just five. Uh, so a little disappointed there. Uh, but that brings us to the end of this session. If you've enjoyed the episode, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Uh, if you want to watch more of my content in the future, make sure you hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell and you'll be advised of future releases. My name is Rudimentary Rob. Uh, thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day.